Howdy y'all, it's Ryan from RA Music, your mom and pop guitar shop deep in the heart of Texas. That's where I'm at right now. And today I'm gonna let y'all see some guitars. I'm so excited. All right, so a couple of years ago, I did a guitar collection video, kind of showing you like uh, my guitars and Angela's guitars, our little family guitar instrument collection. Because um, people had asked about it, it's not really a, like, hey, check out, you know, we got a bunch of guitars or whatever. But it's just people kind of asked, hey, what guitars, what's your favorite guitar do you like to play? Well, how many guitars do you own? Kind of thing, out of a curiosity deal. So uh, that video, we did that a couple of years ago. You can go watch that video. I'll probably put it at the, the end of this video. You can go look at it. But um, I thought I'd do an updated one for 2018. This is the Lolly Family Music Instrument Collection. So in no particular order, I'm gonna show you some of our guitars. All right, first I have this Washburn Guitars USA Custom Shop Deep Carve, look at that car, Paduk Top Idol. Very beautiful guitar, mahogany body and neck, Paduk Top Deep Carved, really love the carve on this one. Uh, ebony fretboard, abalone blocks, it's got Seymour Duncan Antiquity pickups in it. And this is an extremely special guitar. It means a lot to me personally. And uh, it was number eight. I don't, you probably can't see that. Number eight of 13. There's only 13 of these in the world. And this is number eight from that production run. Hence its name, The Ocho. Sometimes I call it The Beast, right? I think this is the only guitar I have that has a name actually, but uh, so I acquired this from a friend of mine and I am currently the care caretaker for it. Really like this guitar. It's, this is one of the keepers that will never go away. So there you go, Washburn <laughs> Idol, Custom Shop USA. So that last Washburn was uh, from Boogie Street Guitars out of Pittsburgh, PA, run by Eric McKenna and a good friend of mine and a great mentor in the music industry for me. And this uh, is also a Boogie Street specced out by Eric McKenna, Washburn Idol. This is the Elite Idol Flame Maple Top. Um, it came with 81, 85 EMGs in it. I've actually replaced that with an EMG headset. Mahogany body, mahogany neck, uh, ebony fretboard, Tone Pros Bridge, all that good stuff, a little boogeyman. Inlay, again, a limited run. This is number 12. Yes, number 12 of 50. It's a very cool Washburn guitar. I had, a, I had a big thing for these Washburns. I liked them. Super great upper fret access, really well balanced. I used to joke around that they were Les Paul killers, which not that anything is ever gonna kill a Les Paul. Les Pauls are icons. But it's if you enjoy a single cut style guitar, it's kind of like, Everybody complains about Gibson not upgrading their designs or you know moving with the times. Well, I think the Washburn Idol, especially this is a thick bodied one, two inch thick, you know, kind of solves some of the balance problems and the upper fret access and all of that. But nobody really wants an updated Les Paul, I don't think. But it's kind of like that. It's more like a, a more modern single cut guitar that's very balanced and feels good. It's great. Love this one. I think I got it in 2007. Bought it directly from Eric at Boogie Street. Killer guitar. I love this one. This was the first new guitar that I had in a really long time. Like really long time. Uh, I guess it was about 2007 when we first kind of started making a little bit better money <laughs> as a family. So actually this was a tax return guitar. Because <laughs> if you're getting a tax return, you really aren't making good money, I guess. I don't know. We weren't then with kids. But anyway, I got it. Angela wanted me to get it and I, you know, it's very special. Love this one. Continuing the theme with Washburns, I have another Washburn Idol. This is also a Boogie Street uh, limited edition. Uh, I think this is number 29 of 50. This is the Fallen Idol. You know, see it's got the, it's got the authentic Tony Iommi cross inlays. Eric from Boogie Street was a huge Iommi fan, still is. And so this is kind of a guitar that's sort of a tribute to Iomi. It's not like an SG. I mean, it's a thick body, real two inch thick body. It's like a Les Paul, but it definitely has the, the Iomi tribute crosses, which are super cool. It's got Seymour Duncan El Diablo pickups, which are actually kind of hard to find pickups. 
killer guitar. I got this one in a trade for a really good friend. I traded an amp for it. So uh, I'm really happy. I like it. I, had a, I was on a mission at one point in time to collect as many Washburn Boogie Street guitars as I could. And, um, at the moment I have three. That's what I have. <laughs> so I love this one. It's a great guitar. I need to play it more often. Yet another Washburn. This is the WI-66 Pro, made in Korea. It's a Korean Washburn Idol. These originally came with like Seymour Duck and pickups, but I bought this one used um, at the guitar center that I used to work at in Tulsa, Oklahoma many years ago. I saw it hanging on the wall after I quit working there and got a really good job. <laughs> you could actually afford to buy guitars. Um, I found this one. I bought it used for what they paid the guy for it. Like I got 250 bucks for this thing. Originally they were like $800 guitars, so it was a killer steal. It's got an EMG 81 and a 60 in it. It actually had an 81 and an 81 when I bought it, which was kind of weird. So the previous owner had put EMGs in it and took out the Seymour Duncans. You know, it's scratches and dings and things. But I didn't mind because I bought it used. It's a killer guitar. Mahogany body, uh, mahogany top, mahogany neck, rosewood fretboard, Grover tuners. Killer guitar that I just couldn't pass up for the price. It was a stupid deal. Way more guitar um, than it should have been for the money. So I got it. Love it. Not a Boogie Street, just a you know regular Korean uh, 2005 Washburn. I've kind of given this one to Aiden because he was born in 2005. He doesn't really play guitar very much, but you know I kind of gave this to him so he would play it. He had a little bitty Washburn, three quarter size, but uh, he's kind of outgrown it. But he doesn't really play, so <laughs> I, I play it from time to time. So yeah, another Washburn electric idol. Continuing the Washburn theme, this is actually Angela's guitar. It's a little uh, Washburn, what is it? It's a Washburn WCDM55K. It's got a Koa top, just a little comfort series guitar. It's got this little spoon cut here. It's kind of like a, uh, like a three quarter size guitar. It's like a little portable, you know, not in tune. <laughs> not in tune at all. You can see it doesn't always get played very much. But this is technically Angela's. A little bit of just comfortable, not too big, not too little. Um, you know, just a little acoustic to play around with. More Washburns. I think that's the last. Well, Aiden has a, a Washburn RX6, a little three quarter size black electric guitar. Um, but I don't have that with me. It's at home. But yeah, so we got quite a few Washburns between all of us. Aiden has one, Angela has one. Yeah, so I think that's all the Washburns that I got here. This is one of Angelus. This is a Epiphone Les Paul. Kind of think it was a special edition of some kind. Um, mahogany body, neck. Uh, I replaced the uh, tuners with like the very nice like Gibson custom style tuners that are made by Grover. Um, sparkly, sparkly, <laughs> sparkly top. Made in Korea, so it's a Korean Epiphone Les Paul. It's really good. I'm not sure what the pickups are. I read somewhere that I think they might be USA Gibson pickups, but I have to go verify that. I bought it used for her, and it was a Christmas present for her <laughs> many years ago, 2006 maybe. She plays it a little bit every now and then, not not super a lot because she's not just obsessed with the guitar like I am. This is hers, and she lets me play it from time to time because she loves me. <laughs> but it's a cool little guitar. Really pretty. So this is the only Les Paul we own at the moment, and the only Epiphone, I think. But it's a great guitar, honestly. I lied. We do have another Epiphone. <laughs> it's a little mini V. This is Aiden's now. I bought this for Nicholas, probably 2005, 2006. 2006, because he was six. Little, you know, one pickup, bolt-on neck. It's, it's really not that awesome of a guitar, but they're not supposed to be. They're just little fun things for kids to play on. Super short scale. Um, he gave it to Aiden when he got older. Aiden never plays it. I just keep it around as a joke, and every now and then we'll play funny stuff on it. Like There's a video of my buddy Robert Baker shredding on this thing. That's pretty funny. You should go check out. This is actually our other Epiphone. So we do own two Epiphones. Mini V. Keeping up with the theme of that, here is the one and only Gibson guitar that I own. 
This is my Gibson Explorer that I bought when I was 16 uh, for my first job, bagging groceries, working at a grocery store. It's a 1991 Gibson Explorer. Pretty much all stock, except for I got this custom diamond plate pit guard I put on there for the matching diamond plates, uh, truss rod cover. And uh, well, it does have a custom strap, custom leather strap that actually I made kind of as a tribute like to the Zach Wild red monkey straps that he used to have. So I made that. This one's super special. It's kind of like the Ocho, the Custom Shop Washburn. It's one of those things I'll, I'll never, never sell this one or that one. These are very precious, a lot of sentimental value. And uh, yeah, it's my baby. It's not the one I learned to play on, but it was the first one I bought with my own money. This one's super special. Really love this one. Cool guitar. <laughs> Lots of memories with this Gibson. Chapman Guitars ML2. This is, I think, like the fourth one ever made in Korea. Serial numbers W120004. So I think it's the fourth one. Um, it's kind of special. It was, I bought it from Andertons before we were a Chapman dealer, which we're not anymore. <laughs> but before we were Chapman dealers, before there were any American Chapman dealers. Uh, I got this from Andertons. Uh, Rabia was actually the one who set it up, came inspected and set up by Rabia. The really cool thing I like about those, I got an autograph by Mark Tremonti when I saw Alter Bridge with Angela on her birthday in Dallas at House of Blues. That was not the best birthday present for her, but, but uh, she went because she loves me and I got to hang out with my friend Nick, uh, who flew in from Germany, actually, to the show. So it was great to hang out with them, Nick's friends with Tremonti Sound Tech. And so we got to go backstage in the clinic and kind of meet the band and all that stuff. It was great. Um, I've got EMG passive pickups in this guitar, actually. Took the Chapman uh, passive aggressives out and put in the EMG, the EMG um, passive pickups, which I'm probably gonna take them out because I honestly don't play this guitar that much anymore. So it's kind of a shame to leave these really nice EMG passive pickups in here when I don't play it. So I'm probably gonna take them out and put them in another guitar. But uh, that's my one and only Chapman. Of course, we've had over a hundred come through the store, come through my hands when we were a Chapman dealer. But um, this is the one I got before that and I will probably always keep it just as a reminder of a lot of lessons learned in the business. So my reminder guitar and my Mark Tremonti autograph guitar. <laughs> so there you go. This one, I really like this one. This is my only ESP LTD guitar. It's EC1000T for traditional, really thick body, 22 frets. It's basically um, LTD's version of a 70s Les Paul Custom. So most of the ECs are 24 frets. This is 22. Very thick body, gold hardware, gold locking tuners, which, you know, the 70s Les Paul Customs didn't have. But um, anyways, <laughs> super cool. It came with an 8185, and I took those out and replaced them with gold EMG headsets. It just was the plain black plastic EMGs in there. It didn't really look very good, and adding the gold headset in there really sets off the guitar. Um, maple fretboard. That was the thing I liked about it. I mean, the reason I got it is because it had a maple fretboard. Not because it was black, but because I had a maple fretboard. It's basically a Les Paul with maple fretboard. That's what I liked about it. Very cool. I like it. This was the Tone King's fault. I didn't even know this was a thing until I saw the Tone King did a video about his and I thought, holy crap, I need it. Thanks, Tone King. Moving on. Now we are a Schechter dealer here at RNA Music. Schechter is actually the first guitar company we ever brought on back in December of 09. We got my first Schechter order in. And so um, I've always loved Schechter and they've been a great company to work with. Now I never bought one for myself because I was always focused on moving the ones um, in our inventory out and selling them so we could get more inventory and all that. But I never bought one for myself until about uh, two years ago, I guess, I bought this Schechter Hellraiser Extreme Trans Black Chrome EMG 8189Rs, uh, 
89R neck pickup. Hopefully, I don't know if you can see this. Lighting. Flame maple fretboard, which is sick. Kind of, again, I, I wanted this. I actually wanted a different Schecter, but I couldn't find the one I wanted. But uh, this is the exact guitar, it's just the wrong body shape. I wanted the Solo 6 trans black maple fretboard, but I couldn't find one anywhere. And I found this one for a stupid deal. Killer deal. Neck through. It's got a neck through. Oh, also autographed. <laughs> autographed by Nick Johnston when I saw Nick in Dallas at a little club. Super great guy. Uh, has been super supportive of us as a small mom and pop Schecter dealer. Locking tuners, made in Korea. I'm not a Strat guy or a Super Strat guy, but I really, really like this guitar. So this was technically the first Schecter I ever bought for myself. Love it. Killer deal. I got a killer deal on it too. So originally these were like a grand back in 2012. I paid considerably, le <laughs> considerably less. So anyways, this is my first Schecter. Love it, love it, it's great. Which brings me to my second Schecter. <laughs> Another Hellraiser Extreme. These were 2012 models, neck through construction, locking tuners, EMG 81, 89. This was the guitar that I wanted in that finish, the Trans Black, but I haven't ever been able to find one in Trans Black. So I got this one, this sort of vintage sunburst Exact same guitar, it's everything that I wanted except it's not trans black. Which all my friends are gonna laugh at me. But you know, I actually really am digging this um, vintage Sunburst, actually. They made these in red too. and I like the black the most, but I'm really enjoying this Sunburst. I've been playing this one. This is my most recent guitar acquisition for myself. I found it used and got a killer deal on it. I know it looks like I've got a lot of guitars and we do have a fair number of guitars, but a lot of them I got smoking deals on. Like I did not pay full price for most of these guitars. I was patient and it was the right time or the right financing or whatever. And so I got a good deal. Love this one. This is my one I play a lot. This is the one I play the most kind of right now. It's my second Schecter and I uh, love it. And I still got my eye open for the trans black version of this. I'll get one eventually. So two Schecters in the collection. Proud Schecter dealers, proud Schecter owner and player. Alrighty, now I do own some guitars that I am not a dealer for. And here's an example of one. This is a PRS 30th Anniversary Custom 24. It's right before they changed the headstock so it still says SE Custom. It's got the best trim I've ever played on a guitar. It's non-locking and it's super awesome. It reminds me a lot of my very first electric guitar, which was a Takamini electric. It was this kind of funky brown color too. So this is, this reminds me of my very first guitar. That's why I like it so much. I got a killer deal too. It was, you know, it's the 30th anniversary and they were blowing them out at the end of the year. Cause like this was the last couple of ones they had left. This is probably the least popular color <laughs> for whatever reason. Now, I actually like it, but so I got a smoking, smoking deal on it again. Killer deals. It happens. But I like it. I play this a lot. I actually play it more than my S2. Yeah, an S2. This was my 40th birthday present to myself. So this is a USA PRS S2 in whale blue. Killer guitar. I like it. I was having a crisis when I turned 40. I thought I deserved a guitar for being 40. But I wanted something special. I wanted a, you know, I wanted a USA guitar, but I couldn't really afford, I still can't afford a USA core model PRS. Um, it's just not in the budget for me at the moment. Maybe someday. Well, someday I will have one, but uh, right now I, I can't. So I got this one. Got a sweet deal on it. And they said it had a scratch on it. So I got a little bit of price knocked off. I couldn't find the scratch anywhere when I got it. Now it's got a few now, because I've had it for two years. So I've had this thing for two years. It's a great guitar. It's fantastic, beautiful. I love blue. PRS S2. But honestly, 
to tell the truth, I play the SE Custom 24 more than I play this one. So if that tells you how good the SEs are, um, or at least were when I bought them, it's great. So I've got two PRS guitars. Love them. I would love to be a dealer for PRS someday, so hopefully that will that will happen at some point in the future. Moving on. So this is my acoustic guitar. Angela has the little Washburn, and this is mine. It's a Takamine EAN40C. It's a pretty nice Takamine made in Japan. Still in tune. I don't play a lot of acoustic, honestly. I do a little bit, but not. I don't have to do it much. I play electric most of the time. There was a time where I was playing a lot more acoustic, particularly at uh, church, so I needed one. And again, this was kind of like the PRS. It was a blowout deal. I bought it from a big online retailer. They were liquidating them. This was the last of this model. Um, they were kind of discontinuing it, discontinuing it, so it was really cheap, like stupid cheap. And even after I bought it, I think I paid like $4.99 for it. And even after I bought it for several months, I would find them online from independent dealers for like $1,600, $1,500, dollars $1 So it's, I mean, it's a legit, you know, solid body, satin top, um, spruce top, which I liked. Spruce, is that right? Cedar, <laughs> cedar top, I like that. So this is uh, my kind of one and only acoustic that I play um, when I play acoustic and when I need it. Again, stupid killer deal. I bought this, oh gosh, probably eight years ago. Killer deal. <laughs> Back then it was like one guitar a year maybe. And most of the time when I bought one, they were all killer deals. I mean, you know, if you only drop 500 bucks a year on guitars, that's really not a lot of money necessarily per year. Um, think of how much you spend on coffee and sodas a year. So, you know, in 10 years, that's 10 guitars you could get when you're older. <laughs> Actually, I do have another acoustic. I got a message. It's probably Pat from Australia. Crikey, it is Pat. This is actually my very first mm -hmm. guitar. It's a crappy harmony acoustic that, you know, is just... <laughs> mostly a toy you can't really keep it in tune it's just I didn't learn to play on this guitar I mean this was just something I got as a kid and you, you couldn't really play on it anyways but it's technically my first guitar bridge is starting to pull away I gave it to my nephew for a little while just for him to goof off with and when he got older he gave it back to me because it's not a real guitar real guitar I mean kind of it has frets and strings <laughs> But it's technically a guitar. <laughs> this is my first one. I don't consider it the first real, my first real guitar was a Takamine Electric that I do not have. I feel like an idiot for getting rid of when I was like 17 or 18. Don't ever get rid of your first guitar. That's just, you know, unless you're not sentimental at all. I mean, if you don't care about stuff or sentiment, then you know, get rid of it. But I regret getting rid of my first real electric, so. These aren't guitars, but we do have some ukes. <laughs> this is Angela's ukulele. She plays ukulele a lot more than I do. She actually teaches ukulele lessons. So this is hers. It's a Kala, great company. We've carried Kala ukes for a while now. Really nice to work with. Um, <laughs> ukulele is really fun though. We've sold a truckload of ukuleles. Adam Lamar from Warefoot bought one from us. And she has this banjo lately. It's like a ukulele that's built like a banjo, so it's kind of. <laughs> Needs to be tuned. But this is also Angela's little banjo lately. She doesn't play it a whole lot, but you know, she's got it there just for funsies. It doesn't stay in tune as well as her Kala does, though. And this is a, a Luna. Just like a subsidiary of Dean guitars, but um, you know, it's just fun. It's a fun little, you know, kind of toy, toy ukulele thing. Well, it's not a toy, I mean, it's a real instrument, but. Yeah, 
it is what it is. I'm gonna include our son Nicholas in this. Nicholas is a bassist mostly, so he's got, this is his acoustic bass. We usually keep it here at the shop. Use it in lessons and stuff, but this is uh, Nicholas's Fender four string acoustic bass. Uh, bought it used from a guy who was gonna go to a pawn shop or something, I don't know. I think these are maybe like 300 bucks, something three or 400 bucks, you know, back in the day. Got a killer deal on it. But this is Nicholas's bass. He's got two other basses. He has two Schecter basses and he has a guitar at home. So I might show you those when I get home. Um, but I may not, you know, I may not film those just you know, I'll tell you about them. <laughs> so there's there's two more bases at uh, the Lolly House and another diamond. There's a diamond hailfire that's actually Nicholas's. He doesn't play it very much. He's more into the bass, but he wanted a guitar, and you know, so I made him a deal. Actually, it was a Christmas present. I gave it to him as a Christmas present. So I may or may not show those off, who knows. Um, but that's that's essentially the current guitar collection. I have sold several of my personal guitars. I've sold uh, sold two of my washrooms that I had. I've sold, uh, I had a couple of, I had a diamond, I sold it. You know, sold several. I've been, I've been purging a few the last year or two, but I've also been getting a few new ones too. So we'll see what the, oh, oh. Oh, we got one more awesome one I gotta show you guys. Last but certainly not least is a CMG Guitars Ashley model. And we've been CMG Guitar dealers here at RNA Music for four years? Four years now? I think that's right, four years. Now this is one of the earliest ones we got and it's very special because it's actual serial number 000326. 326. The reason that's special is because March 26th is mine and Angela's anniversary. So yeah, which is in two days. <laughs> two days from now will be March 26th and we will have been married for 19 years. 19 legendary years. And so when I got this, it was kind of a fluke. I didn't know that was a serial number. And I just knew that we were in the kind of 300s or low 300s. And I actually called Chris at CMG and said, hey man, you got number 326 laying around, you know, in the workshop, is it being built? Do you have it on hand? Has it been you know, is it coming out? And he's like, isn't that the one I just sent you? I had to go, it was on the wall. I ran and grabbed it off the wall and looked. I was like, holy crap, it is. You just sent us number 326. I didn't even realize it when I got it. I didn't really look at the serial number so much, but. So I decided to keep this one for us because it's the magic number, serial number. I'm actually gonna have Chris do a custom wood control plate for us that talks, you know, serial number 326, da da da, Brian and Angela, special anniversary guitar. All of that. So this one is super special too. This is kind of, it's like the Gibson and uh, the Custom Shop Washburn. It's it's a keeper just because it's got a magic number if you care about that stuff. <laughs> Some people don't care at all about that kind of crap. I do. I think it's kind of neat. So yeah, this is our CMG. Now I would have not picked this color. This is the Georgia Sunset color. It's not what I would have picked personally. They had a couple of trans black ones that I thought were sick but we sold those, <laughs> but this is the magic number. It's, it's got the right number, so what are you gonna do? Now, I hope to eventually have another CMG for myself. We've already sold several CMGs, um, but I want another one for me. I'll probably get when we do the number five of five CMG RNA limited edition custom guitar, um, dealer exclusive. You can only get it from RNA Music. So number five of that run, I, I am going to keep. So that's gonna be, I will get another CMG for myself personally in the future, but uh, this right now, this is the only one that I have for me. So great, I think that's it. You know, excluding the couple of basses and the diamond guitar at the house, that's pretty much the current 2018 guitar collection lineup from Ryan and Angela. So I hope you guys enjoyed that or found that interesting. Now again, 
I know it's tough because sometimes I've been there where you know I we didn't have very much money and there was a long time I went where I only had like one guitar um, for like a couple of decades, right? Where there was just there was just no money for this. This these are luxury items, right? And I get that, and I and I understand if if you're in a place where you don't have very many guitars and you know. That's fine. We've we've been there. I think a lot of people have been there. I know guys now who have, oh gosh, I know some dudes who have like 40 and 50 guitars in their collection. And I'm sitting here thinking, like, you know, like, well, 13 is kind of a, a lot for me, but I know guys who have a ton of it. Um, but I also know there was a point in time where those guys didn't have anything. And they worked really hard and they, you know, really saved their money and you know, they got better at their jobs or got better at their careers or, you know, learned some new skills and, you know, they're buying, buying some nice guitars. Most of mine were pretty affordable. I think I even, like for my Gibson Explorer, I paid 500 bucks for it in 1992, which is a lot of money in 92, but, you know, I bought it used. Um, so I do have quite a few guitars, I would say, but most of them were, you know, very reasonably priced. Uh, for the most part, a couple of them were, you know, I think I only owned one guitar that was cost more than a thousand dollars. So, you know, there are deals out there if you're patient and you're not in a hurry and, you know, you save your money. So I don't know why I'm talking about this. You know, <laughs> if you have a lot of guitars, great. And if you don't have a lot of guitars, but you want some, awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you'll get there. You might be like me, and not may up. It may be in your late 30s to, before you can actually afford to have more than one guitar, and that's okay too. I'm a late bloomer, I guess, at this. But, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it interesting. We may do an updated one in a couple of years. I'm sure this will change. I've sold a few guitars that I didn't think I would ever sell, but I did, and I've gotten a few new ones. You know, your tastes are always changing, so. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, you know, I think it'd be fun to know. Leave a comment below and tell me how many guitars you have in your collection. If if you want to. If you don't, don't. You know, no pressure. Um, tell me what your favorite ones are. And do you even have any favorites of the guitars that you own? And how many guitars, how many guitars is too many guitars? Like, when should someone co quit collecting guitars? <laughs> how many is too many? So let me know uh, what you guys think. If you guys want to list your guitars below in the comment section and, and list off what you've got, you know, and maybe where you got them and how long it's taking you to get the guitars you have now, that would be cool. I would love to hear those stories. So thank you guys so much. Share that below. That would be awesome. And until next time, you guys keep the music alive, keep playing guitar, and let's help each other keep music alive for the next generation. For these young kids and beginner players of all ages coming up, starting their guitar journey, Let's keep it positive. Let's keep it awesome for them. So excited. We'll see you guys next time.